I am glad to present the status of refugees in South Asia. The objective of the presentation is to enhance the understanding of the situation of refugees in South Asia and engage collectively to reduce the scale and complexity of forcefully displaced situation. In South Asia, we have refugees who are living in cities and their presence is invisible and insignificant. We also have refugees who are condemned to survive in congested camps for a protracted period without having any credible information on the future of their life. South Asian states namely Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka or refugee generating and receiving countries. Barring Afghanistan, the other South Asian countries are not signatory to refugee convention 1951. The convention relating to the status of refugees 1951 and it's a subsequent protocol 1967 dealing with the status of refugees is the cornerstone of refugee protection at the international level. So far, 142 countries have signed the document and therefore they are binding by the document. South Asian countries fall under low and middle income category with limited resources and high density of population. These countries are connected with the porous borders. By the end of 2020, we find more than 82.4 million people across the globe are forcefully displaced by war persecution, the climate crisis and other factors concerning humanity. Children under the age of 18 accounting for 42% of the 82.4 million have left their homes in search of safety and dignity. The world is witnessing human tragedy silently. Growing culture of impunity in the world is a cause of concern and calling the leaders to decisive actions. South Asia is home to over 2.5 million refugees, approximately Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Pakistan and in Sri Lanka. These countries are ill-equipped, overwhelmed and under-resourced to deal with unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Afghanistan is the second largest ethnic group next to Syria seeking for a third country settlement. Refugee issue is a huge problem as a result of religious, ethnic and ideological persecutions in the refugees home country. Reasons for forcefully displacement in the absence of legal regime in South Asia, refugees, stateless persons, internally displaced persons, migrants, illegal settlers are all interchangeably used in our articulation and conversation. According to the report of Independent Commission on International Humanitarian Issues, the new states that have emerged from decolonization have inherited artificial boundaries, fragile national unity, brittle political systems and distorted economies, 
it is a complex issue multi dimensional in nature and most sensitive and contentious issue. A few major reasons for the refugee crisis in South Asia, anti colonial wars and self determination movements, international conflicts, revolutions, coup and regime changes, ethnic communal and religious conflicts, creation and restructuring of state boundaries, militant majoritarianism, protective minority policies, threat to national security, possible demographic changes that could affect local population socially, economically and politically. Refugee protection in South Asia is fluid, unsteady and complex. We will go into the global refugee protection mechanism. After the world war second, the nation states have established a few important legal remedies for persons fleeing persecution. Article 14, one of the universal declaration of human rights mentions that a person can seek asylum in other countries. The regional protection arrangements like American Convention on Human Rights, Article 22.7 and the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, Article 12 of 3 provide protective system. The principle of non refoulement which prohibits the states from returning refugees to their home countries if they are likely to face threats to their life and liberty. These refugees and these instruments have their limitations for implementation due to political ramifications and lack of political will. The refugee rights are protected under legal framework. The legal framework dealing with refugees is guided by international human rights law customary international law, international humanitarian law. The UNHCR looks after the issues and needs of refugees. Attempts have been made at several times among South Asian countries to treat refugee issue as humanitarian in nature. Owing to the national security, far-sighted national influence and religious persecution, these attempts were abruptly put on abeyance. The South Asian countries do not feel the necessity to sign the refugee convention and they do not want to adopt western type of protection mechanism for refugees. Partition, religious and ethnic conflict are the sources of mass exodus of refugees. There are challenges to the ratification of UN convention. Once the countries endorse the UN convention, they are bound to invest on huge infrastructure to protect the refugees. The country's commitment and engagement will be audited. 
radicalization of refugees take place and the refugees misused the refugee convention in the global north to raise resources for terror networks in their home countries arguably the global north has minimized the core principles of refugee protection based on the convention rising right wing politics and xenophobia create concern for the global north to gradually withdraw their commitment to refugees the south asian countries use the above reasons for not being part of the convention but we need to evolve a more focused balanced and consistent refugee law for south asian countries the refugee issues and concerns are considered as political and religious issues rather than humanitarian issues for instance the recent act of indian government on citizenship amendment act looks at the refugee issues from the religious point of view it becomes an emotive issue in south asian countries the 2019 act better known as citizenship amendment act caa is under challenge before supreme court the law is accused of fast tracking citizenship to non muslims persecuted minorities like hindus sikh jain buddhist parsi and christian from the three neighboring countries pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh the indian constitution guarantees certain fundamental freedoms to all persons within its territory not just to indian citizens the persons fleeing to india due to persecution have to be protected by the constitution the fundamental rights that are all persons including asylum seekers and refugees enjoy under the constitution include a right to equality before law article 14 protection of life and liberty article 21 right to fair trial article 21 and the right to practice and propagate own religion article 25 in recent times india has received several criticism from international community and inside for its policy of deporting rohingya refugees who are fleeing from myanmar into india approximately 40000 rohingya refugees are in india the policy triggered national debate in the country government's decision comes under public scrutiny with the intervention of supreme court the policy of deportation is stalled for time being the legal status of refugees is governed by foreigners act of 1946 the refugees asylum seekers and migrants are all under the broad category of foreigners act it fails to recognize refugees as a separate category who have come 
under different complex situation. Regarding the definition of refugees in India, it is left to the ad hoc executive orders and judicial pronouncements. It is ambiguous and sketchy. The Supreme Court has stated that the power of the government in India to expel foreigners is absolute and unlimited and there is no provision in the constitution fettering this discretion. The executive government has unrestricted power to expel the foreigners from the land. Based on this provision, the government can deport any group of refugees anytime to anywhere. There are very many problems faced by refugees. First one is a language barrier not only for communication but also for refugee children to enter into school system as these countries have diverse languages. Refugee determination process is lengthy and cumbersome. Lack of valid documentation from home countries and complex process to obtain refugee card from UNHCR or local government. Inaccessibility of government jobs due to refugee status. Professionally qualified refugees are unable to get work permit to go out of South Asian countries for employment. Frustrated refugees are hoodwinked for lucrative jobs or obtaining citizenship in Canada and Australia and other western countries by human traffickers. Often these people are taken in fiber boats and drop them in a launch mid sea. Vulnerable adults and minor girls are trafficked to Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand and other neighboring countries. Now I would like to say something about JRS, the Jesuit Refugee Service in which I belong to is an international Catholic organization founded in 1980 by Father Petru Arupe, the then Superior General of the Society of Jesus to respond to the plight of Vietnamese refugees fleeing war ravaged homeland. JRS seeks to accompany, serve and advocate on behalf of refugees asylum seekers, those internally displaced by conflict or disaster and those returning home after years seeking refuge abroad. Chairs is engaged in 56 countries working for the well-being and hope of refugees and promoting education, mental health, psychosocial service, livelihood, advocacy programs to provide opportunities for integration into host community. Peace and reconciliation is very important program. We conduct peace reconciliation programs through peace clubs, occasion groups, youth clubs to break the vicious cycle of violence and encourage the practice of peace and reconciliation in the lives of refugees from Sri Lanka, Tamils, Afghanistan, Chin and Rohingyas. The second one is education and livelihood. 
we have a concept in Afghanistan each one teaches some is another novel method which has enhanced not only their responsibility to reaching out to their neighborhood but also they earn a little bit of pocket money for their life. JWL and JRS have got a network. Jesuit Worldwide Learning is part of Jesuit network which provides opportunity in higher education to forcefully displaced youth and women. Diplomas and degrees are offered by internationally acclaimed universities to refugees. Afghanistan scholar program, we bring the selected young persons to India for their higher education in the Jesuit run universities. And these youngsters mingle, discuss, debate with Indian democratic egalitarian system and the students while they are interacting, they benefit from each other. This training and exposure will help in rebuilding their country when they get back. We run complementary education centers in all JRS camps, in Tamil Nadu JRS camps. JRS is running this complementary education centers for Sri Lankan Tamil refugees in camps for young children and college students as a way of promoting their interest in academics and extracurricular activities. For the Sri Lankan refugees, JRS has set up a reusable sanitary napkin production to augment their income and increase livelihood opportunities, producing, marketing and selling sanitary produce help the members come together. We have another program called Skilling Circles, which is introduced to Afghan and Chin refugee women in New Delhi who have come from conflict zones. This provides them a platform for social interaction and social cohesiveness besides using their ethnic creative skills for their own team empowerment. So this helps them to for the refugees to move from dependency syndrome to self-sufficiency and the refugee women's contribution is incredible. Formation of women refugees and self-help groups are linked with the educational institutions for enhancing their marketing techniques. For instance, Liba and Jim offer marketing techniques to refugees. Mental health psychosocial support is another flagship program of JRS. We conduct CFS child friendly space and this was upgraded into MAC multipurpose child adolescent centers in Cox's Bazaar. We have Rohingya refugee population closer to a million. Building refugee resilience is deemed paramount as they are still gripped by fear, trauma and uncertainty of future. So JR has introduced CFS which are upgraded to multipurpose socio child and adolescent centers. These centers focus on social, cognitive and emotional well-being of Rohingya refugees with a futuristic vision of making them self reliant. Through essence of learning methods, they learn to draw, participate, paint and engage in role plays. So finally, I end up with the roadblocks for self-reliance of refugees. Refugees fleeing conflict zones will soon be replaced with environmental refugees. With the current ecological imbalance, and environmental degradation they are all leading to drought, flood and the country's need to draft more empathetic refugee and migrant policies. China had given a huge loans to South Asian countries 
as it has done to some of the some of the poor countries it has given huge loan to sri lanka and has taken the hambandota port to the lease for 99 years 500000 chinese laborers are working in infrastructure projects funded by china residents and civil society members oppose the new political colonization through economic assistance in the recent g7 meeting the us president joseph biden proposal for a build back better world b3w initiative seen as a counter to china's trillion dollar one belt one road initiative aggressive and competitive international policy will escalate tensions and border issues leading to displacement of people humanitarian and developmental actors must approach refugee crisis in inclusive justice involving community centric strategies it is the integral part of the 16th sustainable development goal this is the commitment of international communities to ensure peace justice and to build strong institutions documentation is another issue for increasing the employability and productivity of refugees since india has no legal framework refugees cannot apply for work permit some of them are recruited by multinational companies during campus interview the companies refuse to take them in when they come to know the refugee identity refugee status hence unfortunately educated refugees end up in doing menial jobs which affects their spirit and morale lack of institutional support or centralized coordination structure to provide micro finance training market the uh, products self reliance program is specific to a local area and particular refugee group the products are not able to go beyond the refugee community and camps there is a greater need to coordinate the agency so that program and plan of making refugees self sufficient becomes complete the policies of government can also affect self reliance program of civil society and and ngos training program for youth taking them out of camp for exposure program and right based approach which are part of uh, making the refugee self reliant get adversely affected the rohingya refugees are worst affected in the world and they need longer and fuller participation of ngos but the government looks at the issue from security perspective and they are brand branded as illegal migrants thank you so much